I recently acquired a bunch of slabs, this beautiful piece of ash, kind of looks like a piece of bacon, and some walnut slabs, and this fruit wood slab, which is either a pear or apple wood, I'm not sure. I did make several jigs for this project as a 16 inch diameter plexiglass center finer. Uh, I want some of this grain pattern in, I want some of the cracks, I want some of the natural edges on the side. And I still want to include some of the tree structure uh, that branches off from the trunk. And if you like making jigs, make sure you click that bell so you'll be notified when I come out with the jig videos. Perfect. I decided to use a Aztec gold color uh, Pearl X pigment powder to add to my, of course, total bolt resin. And I decided on a solid color, so I'm adding a bunch of the pigment in there to make sure that you can't really see through it. And this color of gold came out great. And if you're interested, this is a silicone spatula I picked up at a craft store for like a dollar. And it works great. All you have to do is just take a, a paper towel and wipe it off and you're good to go again. I did end up mixing another batch. Uh, I didn't quite have enough resin. And after letting the resin cure for uh, several days, I came back and checked on it and noticed that there was a crack. I possibly poured it on a little bit too thick, so next time I'll have to do layers. So I mixed up some more resin, same color, and just filled in uh, some of the voids, bubble holes, and uh, that big crack. Here's a resin tip. If you want to salvage your little mixing cups, just pour a little alcohol, rubbing alcohol on it, <laughs> and wipe it out with some paper towels, and it's as good as new. After several more days of letting the resin cure, I was finally ready to take it out of the mold and mount it on my lathe.
all looks good, so I'm moving on to the back side, and I'm attaching that with my four jaw scroll chuck into the recess. <laughs> I'd also like to mention this is my first video of the new lathe in action and it's awesome. Next I moved off the lathe and I sanded the back up to 400 grit. You can sand the piece on the lathe as well at this step, but it's just as easy off the lathe. And then I moved on to adding more resin uh, for some of the details. I'm also using tuck tape or sheathing tape to uh, hold some of the resin uh, voids in on the sides. And at this point, I'm going to cast in these silicone molds some clock face numbers. And now you could probably see where I'm going with this. Once again, about three days later, the clock numerals came out great. The molds work great. Got them on Amazon. Uh, they just come right out of the mold, no problems. Very crisp. And the reason why I casted my own clock numerals is because I couldn't find any that I really liked. And plus, I wanted them to be the exact same color. I did notice a couple of small holes appeared after the second turning. So I used some black star bond super glue and filled those holes. Uh, used some accelerator on it real quick and then sanded it down. Worked like a charm. So I applied three coats of shellac as a base coat sanding in between before adding this Howard's uh, Restora finish. I found that it works pretty well with wooden resin combinations. Uh, you definitely need to buff it out. It can get a white residue from the micro abrasives in it, but if you buff it, you should be fine. I did develop this kind of roadrunner type <laughs> Uh, system of taking some of the excess resin off the clock numerals and it worked pretty well. Just got to make sure you don't uh, heat up the resin too much. I used a metal picture frame hanger and epoxied it to the back of the clock mechanism after scuffing each of the parts up. For aligning the clock numbers, I printed out this sheet uh, of a clock face and it had a hole in all the tick marks. And I just aligned that with the center hole and extended the lines out using strings and that worked really well. But you never know, only time can tell. <laughs> I used a small amount of the same two-part epoxy to uh, adhere the numbers to the wooden base. I had zero problems installing the clock mechanism. As long as you do your research for measurements, you should be fine. I really like how this project came out. I just love the look of resin and wood. It's just so neat. I like, you know, just wood by itself as well, but I don't know, it's just something about it. It's neat. Love the lathe. Everything that I've thrown at it, this trucks right through it, no problem whatsoever. If you're in the market for a lathe and are thinking about uh, one like this, uh, you know, shoot me some questions. I've used it for a little bit over a month now and there is nothing that I don't like about it so far. Well, I have to say this time, it was a very simple project. I mean, it was a long project and there was a lot of parts and uh, dry times of the resin. I learned a lot. 
in this whole process and I could definitely uh, streamline the process, make it more efficient uh, in the future. But it generally was an easy project and you could definitely do this project completely off the lathe. If you didn't have a lathe, you could use a router for sure. So until next time, as always, stay safe in your shop at all times. Take care and thank you.